like to take a moment to thank our listeners sincerely for your support of Honest News Network Ministry. If you're interested in supporting this ministry, please use the information provided. Thank you. Praise the Lord. I just wanted to remind you all to don't forget about the prayer board that we have there. If you don't know of the prayer board where you can post prayers, you can find a link on our website at honestnewsnetwork.com. If you post your prayers there, uh, God's people can be praying for you. Thank you for your continued prayer for my family. And uh, God is so good. He mixes mercy with everything that we as his people go through. Thank God we don't have to go through what the world goes through without mercy. Amen. The Lord sustains. Amen. He keeps. He satisfies. He's faithful. We have hope, people, that the world doesn't have. Amen. The world does not have the hope of eternal life. They do not have the hope of the resurrection. Sad to go through life with no hope. Amen. That's sad. But we have this hope. Amen. And hope makes not a shame. The scripture tells us that the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hope maketh not a shame. Aren't you glad that it's not just empty hope? It's real. Amen. It's not a pie in the sky, people. Eternal life is real. Amen. This life is soon going to pass, people. Amen. This life is but a vapor. It's soon going to pass away. Heaven and earth's going to pass away. Amen. Only those who do the will of the Father are going to live forever in his kingdom. Amen. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness to us, for your long suffering and your patience. We thank you, Lord, that you give us warning. You give us a, a uh, heads up, Lord. You don't leave us in the dark, that we can know even the time. We don't know the exact date, Lord, but we know the time, and we know the time is short. We know we're getting closer to that time. We know the end, Lord, is, is upon us. We know that. Lord, we pray that you will Bless, Lord, this time as we minister your word. Pray that you will help your people, if they are going to sleep, help them to wake up, Lord. We ask that you bless and that you anoint this message as we minister your word, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Very, very serious message we have for you this morning, or should I say now, this afternoon. We begin with Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 15. Slothfulness casteth into a deep 
sleep. And an idle soul shall suffer hunger. Slothfulness. That's not just being lazy. That also has to do with rejecting the truth. Even fighting against the truth. Resisting the truth, slothfulness, casteth into a deep sleep, and an idle soul shall suffer hunger. Look up the word slothfulness in the word idle. You get a picture of those that just don't care. They just don't care. Amen. That's really the condition today of many in the church. Take it or leave it. Amen. Suit yourself. Amen. Matthew chapter 25 and verse 1. To some of you, this should be a very familiar portion of Scripture. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. And they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they what? They all slumbered and slept. What did we just read about in Proverbs? A deep sleep, right? Those that slumber are cast into a deep sleep, and they shall hunger. Even the wise virgins are slumbering and going to sleep in this hour. Anybody listening? At midnight, there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went, To buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. And that word marriage is not the actual marriage. It's the marriage feast. It's the the celebration after the marriage. And the door was shut. Anybody listening? Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Speaking to the foolish virgins. Watch therefore, for you know not neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. So we see that at midnight they awoke. Anybody listening? They woke up at midnight. And the scripture says that only the wise were ready. They went in to the marriage feast. But the others were not ready. Those are going to end up in great tribulation. Those are the ones that are going to be beheaded for the testimony of Jesus. Going to have to wash their robes 
in the blood of the Lamb. Luke, chapter 12, verse 36, goes along with Matthew 25, like putting pieces of a puzzle together. And ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord. There they are. They're waiting for the Lord, the bridegroom. When he will return from the wedding. That when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. These are the wise virgins. Anybody listening? That are waiting for the bridegroom. They're going to enter in to the marriage feast. Notice what it says in verse 37. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. Are you listening, people? This is, this is not the marriage. This is the marriage supper of the Lamb. During, in the, well, this is in the beginning of the tribulation hour. But something takes place before the tribulation hour at the beginning. And it says here, and ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will what? He will return. Return. From the wedding. He's returning from the wedding. And those that are waiting for him are the wise virgins. If that's the case, then why, or who, I should say, who is it that got married? It couldn't have been the wise virgins or the foolish virgins. So who got married? If he's returning from the wedding and there are those that are waiting for him and ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding. Anybody listening? Notice down here in verse 38, some of you that have been listening for some time, you have seen this verse in verse 38. It says here, and if he shall come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so, blessed are those servants. How come there's no mention of the first watch? Listen, people, because he's not coming in the first watch. There are some that are going to him, but he's not going to come in the first watch. In the first watch, the wedding takes place. Amen. And then in the second watch and the third watch, the Lord returns. Now, what's the difference between the second and the third watch? The second watch, he returns in the middle of the year. That's where the church is caught up. That's where the dead in Christ are caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And then those that are alive and remain, they shall be caught up together. But then when the Lord returns in the third watch, that's when the Lord returns to the earth at the end of the tribulation hour. Anybody listening? So the first watch is the marriage. The second watch is the marriage feast. And the third watch is when the Lord returns to the earth in judgment, sets up his kingdom. Amen. That's when the uh, thousand-year millennial reign will begin. 
at the end of the tribulation hour. So if you put these together, you, you do well to study this out yourself, but if you put together Matthew 25 and Luke chapter 12, you'll find that they go together like pieces of a puzzle. Amen. Revelation chapter 12, verse 6. The woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared of God that they should feed her there in her place. A thousand two hundred and three score days was his, this is exactly three and a half years. The woman is not Mary, as some are being taught, and, Mary, and the woman is not Israel, as some are being taught. Even the Catholic Church believes that the woman uh, is not just Mary, they say, but also represents the church as a whole. But obviously the Catholic Church are not even saved. They're not even born again. But the devil's always trying to, sh to throw a curveball. He's always trying to distract away from the truth. Oh, well, the Catholic Church believes the woman is the church. They must be right. They believe the woman represents Mary. The sun-clothed woman is Mary. And they worship Mary. And they believe Mary is the mother of God. Anybody listening? The woman represents the church, the real, true, blood-washed church that is going to be left behind. These are the wise virgins. Amen. These are the wise virgins that slumbered and slept. See, when the church finally wakes up, it says the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there two, uh, 2,000, excuse me, 1,203 score days, three and a half years. Amen. Now, to go along with that verse, Revelation 12, 14. And to the woman again, were given two wings of a great eagle. This is the same, the same uh, wording that is used for the deliverance of, of Israel coming out of Egypt. The scripture says God brought them out on eagle wings. The woman is going to be giving, given two wings of a great eagle, which has to do with deliverance, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place. What's going to happen when she's in this place? Where she is what? Where she's nourished. Are you listening? Right now, the church will not listen. The church as a whole will not be fed. But she's going to be nourished during the tribulation hour. She's going to be nourished for time, times, and a half time. That's three and a half years. That puts uh, her in the middle of the tribulation hour being taken out. See, the church is going to be right here on the earth, protected by God from the face of the serpent. Amen. Why did the church end up in the tribulation hour? Because it slumbered and it slept. And it went hungry. It wasn't growing. It wasn't developing. That's where the church is today. Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. 
Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and to him and sup with him and he with me. As already mentioned in the previous verses, we see the Lord was standing at the door knocking. How many know the Lord is standing at the door knocking right now? How many know that his voice is knocking right now? This message, the Lord is knocking. He wants to come in and sup with you. If you won't let the Lord come in and sup with you now, hopefully you will during the tribulation hour when he nourishes the church for three and a half years. You see, this all comes down to, are you willing to let the Lord serve you? My pastor has said for years that if you don't let God do something for you, then you can't do nothing for him. How are you going to do something for God if he hasn't done something for you? Amen? Takes humility. Humble yourself. You got to let God do something for you. So you can be a blessing to others. Amen. So the church is in this stupor right now. This church, the church is in a state of stupor, right? It's in a state of slumber and it's going to sleep. And when it's asleep, it's not going to be eating. And that's what we just read in Proverbs. Let's go back and read this verse again. Slothfulness casteth into a deep sleep, and an idle soul shall suffer hunger. Yeah. So that's the state of the church today. So the Lord is standing at the door, and he's knocking. And he's not knocking at your individual heart. This is not just a salvation message to the individual. Many times, pastors, ministers, evangelists will use this verse of Scripture for a salvation message. But if you look at the context here, God is dealing with a lukewarm church. Right? Notice what it says here. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I'll spew thee out of my mouth. Those, those are the lukewarm in the church that are being cast into the tribulation hour. They're being spit out into the tribulation hour. Now, the Lord is still speaking to someone that will listen. Notice all through Revelation, it says, to him that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith, right? So there are some in the church that are listening. And so to those that are listening, the Lord is saying this. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. That's what the Lord is saying to those that are listening. To those that are not asleep. Amen. Not everyone in this hour can hear verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. What is it he's going to sup with them? What, what is it? What's he going to serve those that are supping with him? Divine truth, people. Revelation. Divine truth. Hidden manna, if you will. Are you listening? To him that overcometh will I grant to eat of the hidden manna. This is, remember Jesus said, I have meat that you know not of. And what was the meat Jesus was talking about? To do the will of the Father, right? And then we see verse 21, to him that overcometh, will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. 
So we see those that are willing to sup with Jesus Christ in this hour, that they will be given something. They're going to be served something that's going to make them an overcomer. And how many know it's not going to be milk? Amen? It's going to have to be strong meat. And that's for those that are aged. Did you know that even eagles are given a diet of fresh slain meat from the time that they're babies? Amen? The mother will turn fresh slain meat into a milk substance and regurgitate that into their mouths. She liquefies that meat. She chews on it and chews on it till it becomes a milky substance. And even the milk of the word, there's meat. Amen? But God in his mercy, he gives that truth to you in a manner that you won't choke on it. Remember Jesus says, I have things to share with you that you cannot bear them now. You'll choke. Amen. I, I don't know how well Brother Joseph does in chewing the meat and and uh, making it so that it's something you can receive. But I hope we're getting better at it. But there's meat, people. There's nourishment in the word. Amen. And it's not just milk. Milk is for the carnal. But this milk has some meat in it. But by now, some of you, many of you, you should be eating strong meat that you have to chew. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Eagles don't eat buzzards food. Amen. They eat fresh, slain meat. And they have to get a diet of that every day. There comes a time when those eaglets, they grow up, they leave the nest, and they have their own nest. And then they have to go out and get their own fresh slain meat for their young. Now, when are God's people going to grow up? There comes a time when you have to start feeding yourself. You got to get some fresh slain meat for yourself and then get some for somebody else. Not all the time depending on someone to bring you something. And that's where most of the church is today. I'm just going to wait on someone to bring me some meat. I'm just going to wait on Brother Joseph to bring me some fresh slain meat today. Well, have you taken the time to get some for yourself so you can help somebody else? Amen. And not everybody's listening. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. You know what's really missing today in the church? Diligence. Yeah. While many of you were sleeping last night, Brother Joseph was studying the Word, not because I'm, I'm better than you or because I'm greater than you, but because God kept me up. He woke me up in the middle of the night, 4 o'clock in the morning, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, just giving me Fresh, slain meat to give to you. Amen? Praise the Lord. You see, Jesus was standing at the door. He is standing at the door, but last night, this morning, I should say, he was standing at the door knocking, and I couldn't go to sleep. His voice was knocking so loud. The word knock in the original Greek means to rap on a door. It means to rap. It doesn't mean just this little gentle knocking on the door. No, it's a rapping. And the Lord was rapping on the door last night so loud that for four hours, I just couldn't shut the word. I just had to keep on eating it, and eating it, and devouring it. And this is some of what the Lord gave to me last night. But we right now are probably 30 to 40 sermons out right now that we haven't even got to you yet. We haven't even been able to get these messages to you yet. Just like 30, 40 sermons waiting. 
Amen? So the, the, the storehouse is full. Amen. The greater the hunger, the more we're going to give out, the more we're going to share. Praise the Lord. They that hunger and thirst after righteousness, they shall be filled. Amen. But not everybody has an ear to hear what the Spirit has to say to the churches. Now, the Lord is speaking. He is speaking. I sleep, but my heart waketh. Why is she waking up? I sleep, but my heart waketh. See, you don't have to be even like the wise virgins that slumbered and slept. You can come out from the lukewarmness in this hour. You can come away from the slothfulness and the idleness. I sleep, but my heart waketh. Is your, is your heart waking up? It's the voice of my beloved that knocketh. It's the voice of my beloved. That's what's knocking. It's his voice. Is his voice getting louder and louder, brothers and sisters? Can you hear his voice? What's his voice saying? Open to me. Open to me. Why does the Lord have to say that to you and I? Open to me. He would not be saying open to me if we were open to him. If our hearts were open to him, we, he wouldn't have to say that. So why is he saying to his beloved, open to me, my sister, my love, my dove, my undefiled, for my head is filled with dew and my locks with the drops of the night. That's what the Lord's saying right now, people. In this verse right here, verse 2, this piece of puzzle goes together with Revelation chapter 3, doesn't it? Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and to him and sup with him and he with me. Amen. I stand at the door and knock. She's sleeping, but she hears his voice. Is that where you are right now? Loving to slumber, loving to sleep, but you hear his voice. Are you one of those in this hour you can hear his voice? He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Do you hear his voice in this hour? Are you hearing the Lord's voice? If you are, you ought to thank God, because most don't. Do you hear his voice? And I don't mean just hearing Brother Joseph preaching right now. I mean, but do you hear his voice? Do you hear the Lord's voice stirring you inwardly? Are you being stirred? Are you being revived? Is there something going on inside of you? Is there a stirring going on? This is not just anybody's voice, people. This is him. This is the bridegroom. This is your beloved. This is the one that loves you more than anyone. He gave his life for you. Amen? It's the voice of my beloved. And distinctly, we hear what he's saying. Open to me. Oh, I feel his presence. When are we going to open to him, people? He wants to come in and sup with us. Are you like this Shulamite that says, I have put off my coat. How shall I put it on? Just silly, silly excuses. I've put off my coat. How shall I put it on? The same way you put it on every time you put it on. How should this be any different? But you don't understand. 
I'm comfortable in this bed. You expect me to put on this coat? It's cold. You want me to get my feet dirty? I just washed them. Listen, this is not just anybody. This is the Christ. This is the son of the living God. This is the captain of the Lord of hosts. This is the bridegroom. Are you listening? Stop making excuses. Quit making excuses. My beloved put his hand by the hole. He's looking for an opening. Amen. He's looking for a way in. My beloved put his hand by the hole of the door. And my bowels were moved for him. Is that you? Is there a yearning in, in you right now? Are you yearning for him? Amen. He put his hand. That word hand has to do with God's power. If the power of God in this hour does not stir you, nothing's going to. How many know his word is not, or his kingdom is not in word only, but in power? Amen? That hand has to do with God's right hand of power. That's, that's the power of God. He put his hand by the hole of the door. And my bowels were moved for him. Amen. She's wakening up now. He's got her attention. I rose up to open to my beloved. And my hands dropped with myrrh. And my fingers with sweet smelling myrrh upon the handles of the lock. Why didn't he just come in? The door was locked. I asked the Lord what this lock represents. He said, your will. God will not violate your will. He's saying, open to me. Unlock the door. Surrender your will. That's what he's saying. And here it is again. Here it is again. Well, this is the counterpart now, right? The Lord said, open to me. And finally, after all this, she says, I open to my beloved. He said, open to me. She sa- it says, I open to my beloved. But my beloved had withdrawn himself and was gone. Did you believe, do you believe you can put off the Lord, people? This is what's being taught right here in verse 6. You can put the Lord off. He was gone. My soul failed when he spake. I sought him, but I couldn't find him. I called to him, but he gave me no answer. Any of you in that place right now? You're calling unto the Lord and he's not giving you an answer? Did you put the Lord off somewhere? Anybody listening? The only thing that's going to wake up the church in this hour as a whole is persecution. Amen? When the dragon saw that he was cast to the earth, the scripture says he persecuted the woman. He persecuted the woman. That's what's going to wake up the church. Now, everything we just read to you here in Song of Solomon, it doesn't have to be you. You can be one of those that opens the door. You open to him immediately when he knocks. When he knocks for you to surrender, for, when he knocks for you to open the door, you're one of those that immediately opens the door and he comes in and he sups with you, amen, and he gives to you what makes you an overcomer. 
You don't have to be one of those in this hour, amen, that's idle, that one of those in this hour that's slothful. You don't have to be lukewarm in this hour, amen. You can be one of those that's diligent, amen. When the Lord comes and he knocks, you immediately open the door, he comes in, amen, he sups with you, amen, and you sup with him, and he makes you an overcomer, glory to God. He makes you to sit with him in his throne. To overcome even as he overcame. Amen. Praise the Lord. Don't be one of those in this hour that's going to sleep and that won't open up to the Lord. Those are the folks that are going to end up in the tribulation hour. Amen. They're going to open up in the tribulation hour and they'll be nourished for three and a half years from the face of the serpent. But they could have opened sooner and not ended up in the tribulation hour. Anybody listening? You don't have to end up in the tribulation hour if you'll listen, if you'll respond. You don't have to be spewed out into the tribulation hour. I'm going to leave you with that thought. God bless you. Got the power in the name of the Lord.